But I mean, that happens as well. New guy comes up, they start doing the same little song and dance. John, I still haven't heard a defense of the Trinity. Do you want yeah, to lay out your argument? We would, we like that. <laughs> we were teasing a bit. He didn't say he would humiliate and destroy you. That, that, that's ridiculous, right? That was a joke. He did say he has a model of the Trinity, relative identity. He feels confident he can defend. And he said if you wanted to talk to him about it, he would not be opposed. That's the truth of what he said. Basically, basically that's accurate what I said. So let's and go. with regard to the well, with regard to that particular model, I was told about several different models. I had to look them up individually and see what mostly aligned to what I already have a view. I just don't have a name for my view. And it just seemed to me what was being described that closely uh, uh, most aligned with what uh, that was consistent with what I viewed. Now, are there no problems with that view? I think I think there are. I really do think there are. But this is a lot um, of just like the bloviating stuff. Like Jake, are we you... gonna? Yeah, we're gonna. Do uh, the I still I still think. Argue both I, sides. Yeah, I still think that I can at Wait, least defend it. it in a in a way that doesn't. Yeah, lead let's just get past the forward. Let's, let's just go. move some past sort of let's, go. let's go. Jake, what do you think about the model of relative identity? That's the only model. Well, I want to hear what John. I want to hear what John's model is. Can you explain it, John? Well, I mean, as far as like the view of the person of the Trinity, and and you know, it's, it's the same old thing. It's like um, there is a, there is an understanding of identity uh, that is not uh, analytically identical. From the first, the father when the father is God is stated, and so um, it is understood in a relative sense to where the son can also be the father in identity as well as the spirit, and so it, it is. Um, it basically is not uh, an analytical identity understanding. And if you yes. want more than that, I could possibly give it a little bit more. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Do you think the Father is identical to God? Uh, yes, in a relative sense. Yeah, so what do you mean by that? Uh, meaning that it's not exclusive, it's not identical, analytically identical. And so, um, so this, it opens up the ability to for the Son to also be God. Yeah, I guess I don't know what that means, dude. Saying they're identical, but in a different sense. In what other sense? What What does that mean? Um, like, what one example would be something like, uh, um, like you as a person. I I can't even believe I'm giving this example. It's just something that Jack brought up, but. You have uh, a ticket to 38D, let's say, right? And uh, you get off the train, and I have a ticket to 38B. So the essence would be sort of understood as uh, the being that has hold, is holding 38D, right? But you'd be a person that's holding it, and in that seat, and I would be a whole, but we're different persons. And but we're we're that same being, in a sense of holding that ticket. I know that's not a great analogy, but yeah, but that, you, you, in that case, you have you have two beings that are just holding a paper that has something written on them. It's the same thing. Well, it, so why it, would you count? It would sort of be why understood as, as one. Well, two? it would be understood as two persons. Now, uh, with respect to the Trinity, um, it would be the same being. Yeah, but the question is why? Person. Why would we count them as two persons but not two beings? Because they have the same essence, and and one essence have the same essence one because being. they're carrying a paper that has the same writing on it. No, 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 no. It, it was just the understanding of that. I'm not saying that, um, um, like in the sense of the ticket holder. I'm not saying they are the same being. I'm just saying that it can be understood as the being that holds the ticket. 
that that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, but so, there's so, clearly so, not one being holding the ticket. There's two. Yeah, in that case, in that example, yeah, it is two beings, right? Two different beings holding the same ticket. Uh, in, in the case of God, rather than two different beings, it would be one being, uh, in, but two persons. Yeah, I, I don't understand how anyone is going to count two people holding a similar piece of paper with the same writing on it and claim that there's only one being there. It makes absolutely no sense, John. Well, it, it would be understood as the being that's holding the piece of paper. Which, which yeah, would be who true. is the being? Paper. Who is the being that it's referring to? Uh, the person that that is holding that is occupying that that the who is that? <laughs> is it person A or person B, or is it a combination of the two? Well, there, I guess if you're including the time factor, depending upon the time, it would be person A or person B. Or or if it's the case that they actually simultaneously have gotten the ticket, then they would be the same person. I mean, they they would they would be. Um, uh, simultaneously on the same trip uh, holding that ticket, particular ticket. Bro, this is probably one of the worst analogies yeah. or examples I've ever heard. Yeah, this is... I a, I, no, I'm just saying that I... That's, that's like one of the examples. It's not even my example. And, and I'm not trying to say that this particular uh, model would somehow... Um, our understanding of uh, the relative identity uh, what is representative of, um, you know, of the of the model of the Trinity. I'm just saying this is just one way to understand it. And so I'm not really expecting, in a sense, to uh, have someone say, "Okay, I get the Trinity now." That's not what it's meant. That, that analogy is not what that was meant. John, can you explain what relative identity is? Yeah, I could try. I could, like, where, um, yeah, I thought I did in the beginning, where where uh, uh, one person could be understood as uh, a being identically, relatively, uh, where it does not preclude another person uh, sharing uh, uh, the, uh, the personhood of, of the being. And so in other words, uh, there can be three persons in one being. Three or more, if you what? want to say it that way. So you think that what you're trying to say is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the same God, but are different persons, right? Well, that would be, that would just be Orthodox Trinitarian. Yeah. And the question is, how do you have two things, in this case, namely the Father and the Son, I'm just using that as an example. You have two things, the Father and the Son. How are you saying that they're identical to a third thing, which is the being, and yet they're not identical to each other? That just violates Leibniz's law, classical identity. Right. Now, interestingly enough, um, I have this friend whose uh, name is Io. I don't know if you know him, but he's very scientifically minded. And this kind of discussion what? What? came up about Leibniz's law. And what he had for me was that uh, it was a very peer, it was a peer reviewed paper. It was oh very God, he's doing paper. the quantum mechanics thing. And what he said was that in complex systems, right, in the natural universe, that the, the law, the Leibniz's law is violated, is what he said, or does not hold up or something to that effect. Yeah, that's not true. What's your, what's your evidence? I'm just saying that's what he said. He sent me uh, so, Yeah, so you're going to appeal to empirics? Is that what you're trying to do here? Um, also, what's that system? It's like three dudes saying there's Is one God guy. absolutely simple, John? Wait. Yeah, these are, you, are do you hold the questions. Divine, Unbelievable. Do you hold the divine simplicity? Uh, provisionally, yeah. What's, well, then it's not a complex system. 
Wait, I didn't hear. Jake, did you disagree with uh, what John was saying that um, identity isn't necessarily um, uh, can be otherwise than the view that Spinoza took? I'm, I'm sorry, that uh, Leibniz took? Um, well, if you're talking about classical identity, it's supposed to satisfy Leibniz's law. At least the, the indiscernibility of identicals. The identity of indiscernibles is a little bit more controversial, but at least the first portion, uh, classical identity is understood as satisfying that. So if you're not accepting that, then John needs to say that. All right, go ahead, John. I mean, I'm, just uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I don't know about philosophically, but I do know that Leibniz's law was specifically mentioned uh, within physics, of all things. And he says that in physics, uh, Leibniz's law does not hold up. Yeah, uh, but that, that depends on uh, what you mean by that, John. I don't know if you're talking about the indiscernibility of identicals or the identity of indiscernibles? Which one are you referring to? Because when you say Leibniz's just, law, sometimes mm -hmm. it could be referred to either one of those and they're not exactly the same thing. Yeah, um, I don't know other than Leibniz's law and nothing after that law of indiscernibles or or which way you understood. It was just Leibniz's law was mentioned. That's all we stated. Yeah, so the, the indiscernibility of identicals just says for any X and uh, Y, if X is identical to Y, then X and Y have all the same properties. So basically saying in order for two things to be identical, they have to share all the same properties. But then the identity of indiscernibles is a bit of a stronger claim that says for any X and Y, if X and Y have all the same properties, then X is identical to Y. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's basically a distinction. You can think about it between necessary and sufficient conditions. Now, uh, in your conversation with Darth, and I have actually had a conversation with Jack earlier this morning. Do you feel that John has answered any of your questions uh, with regard in a satisfactory to, manner? So with regard to that uh, a, aspect, so yeah, you can, take your, you can take your little private poll in the chat, John. So with respect to like... Um, like properties, right? He was talking about the essence. We're talking about essence and properties. What he was saying that how can you distinguish between essences if not discussing the properties? And that that's what he was saying. What what Chris you, Chris was Do you there, feel that you're going toe to toe right now, John? What Chris and I were saying, basically, Jake, was that um, with respect to the properties of the father and the properties of the son. Uh, that they are not identical, right? And secondly, uh, with respect to what Darth was saying, his understanding was that um, that it doesn't necessarily have to encompass the totality of the properties. Don't have to necessarily encompass the totality of the being, uh, but uh, have the necessary qualities that only the the, the uh, being such as God can have. And so taking all of these things into consideration, I think uh, how one understands properties, how understand, uh, how under one understands uh, identity and how it can, uh, it can qualify a as identical, um, you know, can be looked at. Yeah, but John, I mean, I just went through with you uh, Leibniz's law and I explained to you at minimum Classical identity is meant to fill, fulfill Leibniz's law in the sense that in order for two things to be considered identical, they have to be what's called indiscernible, which means they have to share all the same properties. In this case, the father and the son, by what you just said, your own admission, they don't share all the same properties. For example, the father is unbegotten, the son is begotten of the father, I and mean, then we can list other ones as well. And so because they don't share all the same properties under classical identity, it cannot be identical. So but if you're going to hold to that, you're, you're going to have to just one second. If you're going to hold to that, you're just going to have to say something like um, you reject Leibniz's law. Um, 
No, without the... And then that's going to be have consequences. Yeah, without the rejection of Leibniz's law, though, the way uh, Darth was talking in that recording that I heard today, uh, he was he didn't say that... Dude, why the hell are you appealing to Darth? Come on, bro. No, I'm just saying what he said, okay? And what he said was that... You're going toe-to-toe, uh, John. All, all that's required, uh, under his view was that uh, they they had properties that would constitute properties that only a god can have uh, not that he has that the person has to have all the properties and so that's how that's how he And so do you agree out. with that? Do you agree with um, that? Um do, do you think that god has different properties than that or has that god has additional properties whatever god is God has additional properties that the persons don't have, because typically well, it's understood the other way. Well, the way and, and, the way I look at it, clearly the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have different properties. So we could begin but there. Do, There's, uh, but does God have additional properties that the persons don't have? Um, uh, I mean the way because that's basically what Darth was saying. The way I understand it, right, is. As far as properties go, with regard to uh, the essence, there are the properties uh, are not assigned to the person, but to the being. That's my understanding. Um, uh, I know some people view it the other way, where it's, uh, the per- these properties. Can you repeat are, that, John? I, I, I you said the persons have no properties. I didn't say no properties. I said that the way I understand God, that the that the properties associated with God. The being God, the substance, the essence of God, uh, there are properties that are associated with the, the substance. Oh my God! So there's no properties of God that are associated yeah. with the person. Yeah, but what? Yeah, what properties do the persons have besides the uh, properties that come via the essence? Uh, maybe like a generation could be a particular. Uh, understanding yeah but that's what i was just saying so then in that case the persons have all the properties that the essence possesses right however way that you understand that whatever makes up the essence and then they have additional properties to that which are the hypostatic properties now if that's the case is there a logical problem with that yeah because then they couldn't be identical to the essence when the father son and spirit are not identical to each you other mean, because they have hypostatic properties that differ from so each other so when you say identical they cannot be analytically identical is implicit meaning of so you when i say identical, when i right? say identical i'm talking about classical identity by fulfilling the law of identity and under the condition of leibniz's law that's what i mean by identical i just explained that in order for X and Y to be identical, they have to share all the same predicates and properties. So whatever I can say is true of X, I can also say is true of Y and vice versa. Okay. That's what it means. That's fine, but uh, semantically, is there a possibility, is there a possibility for ident- the word identical to be understood in a different way that's coherent? Yeah, you can under you can use the word identical and you can be obviously i mean you can put in whatever semantic content you want for that but then you just have to tell me what it is and you have to tell me whether or not it it is in the sense that i'm describing and if it's not then you're just saying that you have this other understanding of identity which doesn't fulfill Leibniz's law so you need to just spell that out and so um the way i look at it is that everything you've described, you know, the, the law of identity, Leibniz's law, uh, you know, um, uh, analytical identity. In that sense, uh, you, you would be correct. However, uh, as far as the model of relative identity, I think that there's a certain understanding of relativity. How's that? In, 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 the, in the way that they use the word identity. So it's kind of like... A, 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 kind of like an adjective for the identity they're using. And I think it's understood differently. No. There's, not, there's not an equivocation. No, it's a grammar lesson here. It's an adjective. 
now, John, it's, it's not an adjective. They're still saying that they're identical to it. It's not an adjective. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, why don't we do this? What is your understanding of relative identity if I have an erroneous view of relative Explain identity? Explain it for me. Okay. okay, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's very simple. Uh, in this context, the idea is that father and son can be the same God, which means identically the same God, but different persons. So they can be the same type of thing, but a different type of another thing. That's the claim. Isn't that basically what I said? No. No? You were talking... No, you were... No. Or if you were trying to say that, fine, but I didn't understand you saying that. And then, so I guess what I'm trying to say... You see, is, what, he, you see what he just did there, like so, it's transparent, right? So what I, what I, what I will say this, okay. He gibberated, that per, and then that he particular, asked you to explain it, and you said, yeah, that's what I said. I mean, they said nothing. So, so that particular view, that particular view, are you saying that there's, um, it's incoherent? I'm saying it violates <laughs> classical identity. So, yeah, in that sense, if you take classical identity to be necessarily true, then it would be false. The view would just be false. So, you'd have to argue that uh, Leibniz's law and classical identity. It's not true. There's there's no such relation as classical identity, and that's very difficult. I mean, you can look at Peter Van Inwagen's paper where he goes through this. He basically develops uh, relative identity logic. And you can do that so that you can basically get um, – you avoid any type of incoherence, so to speak, on this other form of logic, but then you're just – you're not working with – classical identity or classical logic at that point so so, uh, so you're saying that you can formulate a model by which it's coherent it would just be uh different than the classical law of identity and yeah, you're That's just different. dealing with a sub classical logic it's just like saying well i could formulate a model that accepts true contradictions so if you if you take that view then sure i mean jc beale does that when he believes in he believes in true contradictions. So if you want to go that route, I'm yeah. sure you can. You're just yeah. exchanging the law of identity in this case for the law of non-contradiction. You're just and, and, using a different... And so kind of like it got me to thinking about this, uh, you know, several months ago with regard to a lot of things I've been hearing, like, uh, you know, the risk pain logic, for example, it's a sort of a Western view. Eastern views have a different type of logic altogether uh, names like uh, uh, Ibn Sina or Avicenna was mentioned as far as like the inference rules this is all that fluff. he doesn't use. So I guess what I'm no, trying to say John, is... No, John, 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 uh, John. Now you're just talking out of your ass. Okay? Because Avicenna was <laughs> through and through Aristotelian. In fact, he's the one that sort of imported so to, uh, quote unquote Aristotelian thought and Aristotelian logic into the Islamic world. So that's probably the worst okay. possible example you could use. Okay, because then I must have uh, misunderstood what Elias was saying about uh, about Abyssinia. But uh, but in any case, uh, so Shocker. am I correct about about Eastern uh, views and, and Western views and, and Western logic? I don't know if or... you're referring to some type of Zen Buddhist logic or something like that. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're referring to. I guess what I'm trying to say. But certainly not have a sense. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, uh, like, Aristotelian logic is not some sort of ultimate authority in, in terms of what is necessarily true. That's kind of how I view it, and I wow. think that when, when certain when certain understandings of of like the uh, like you mentioned uh, Peter Van Inwagen, for example, uh, you're saying basically that uh, it can be developed to where it's coherent, but it just doesn't follow the classical laws of logic, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Or, or uh, like Leibniz's law, for example, um, like I said, I don't know the depth of what the claims are with regard to the violation of Leibniz's law in physics. I really don't know. I was just given that paper. 
I didn't really even read it. I, if I went through my uh, my messages, I could probably find it and maybe post it or just look at it myself or whatever. But that was an interesting claim, though. That uh, he, I specifically remember him saying that in complex systems, it breaks down. Yeah, that's usually, I think, what you're referring to is uh, the identity of indiscernibles, which is um, a bit more controversial. People like Max Black uh, famously kind of argued against it, but not the not the first part. So you're saying that the stronger claim is controversial, but uh, the, the one that we're talking about is the weaker claim. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. The, the first part, if for any X and Y, if X is identical to Y, then X and Y have all the same properties. It means a necessary condition for them to be considered identical is to share all the same properties, right? The identity of indiscernibles is basically saying that that's a sufficient condition, that if they share all the same properties, then they must be identical. Those aren't the same claim. The, the, we're dealing with the, the first one. Right. So it has to be the totality of properties, not just uh, yeah. certain qualifying properties? Yeah, it's the totality of properties for any predicate or property that is described either one, X and Y, they must both possess it, must both share. So, I mean, the, the way I look at it, like, it almost seems like you're prescribing how identity needs to be understood. It's not me, John. And, <laughs> and, this is not my idea. Uh, what do you mean? No, I, I get, oh no, I, get I get the laws of identity. I get all of that, right? And I guess what I'm trying to say is... John, it's very I intuitive. From, it's from been the accepted for how long, right? And yeah, no, no, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're Peter saying. Van Wagen, John, but, explicitly says there's no example of anywhere in creation or anywhere in the natural realm of the law of identity being violated. The only example is for him, the things like the Trinity and incarnation. He literally says, this is a quote from his paper, that there is no utility for relative identity logic outside of Christian theology. So he doesn't even so, believe that there's any case. Oof. So in other words, you, uh, what, what's the claim? Like it's some sort of post hoc rationalization? Correct, it clearly is. Clearly is, and he even goes on further, which I don't want to get too much into detail with it, but you run into all sorts of problems about not being able to use. Um, <laughs> anyway, I don't, I don't want to get too in-depth with it, but if that's your view, John, then you, you simply are just rejecting classical identity. So you're, you're utilizing a subclassical logic in order to explain away the incoherence. Now, I've, I've heard two views on this, right? That's that's a very I've charitable heard, way of describing... I've, I've heard one community. view from Christians, which they just simply say, yeah, it violates the laws of classical logic, uh, whatever, like, who cares? Uh, there's another one, a group of Christians, who say that, uh, that you can have relative identity and it does not violate the classical logical, classical laws of logic even though it has the apparency of it. So, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with it. Yeah, and but that's that that's going to be on. So, I mean, I went over this yesterday with Adam and the theory that he was representing. There's a distinction in the literature between pure and impure relative identity. So what you were describing is a pure version in which uh, it's not satisfied. What he was talking about is um, an impure version in, in which basically amounts to uh, counting by a relation other than classical identity, right? So he's not saying that they're identical in the same way that you are. Uh, he's saying that they're numerically the same and they're not identical. And typically the problem with that view is that we usually understand numerical sameness and identity to go hand in hand, right? Uh, but in that case, he's just gonna say something like, or what you should say is that you're, you're counting by some relation other than classical identity, uh, which is usually divisibility or separability, something like that. But then I explained why that's problematic because, 
Um, the, the Trinitarian doesn't consistently apply that when it comes to counting other things with respect to the Trinity itself, because they count persons by identity, namely that the Father and Son are not the same thing because they differ, because they have different properties. No, they're indivisible. So um, it's an interesting statement that you said about like numerically the same, but not identical. And when I think about the word identical, identity, all these things, and I think about scripture, it actually doesn't make the claim like that in a sense of, uh, you know, the father is identical to God or something like that. Right. So it's kind of like we're using these philosophical terminology to try to transpose these understandings into into the theological. You see literature. what he's doing now, and and so to me, it almost seems like a, an issue of semantics, uh, to where like even if this guy is going to say they're numerically the same, but not identical, then, then then it actually does convey a concept, which is simply just going to have to be used in different terminology for the for the understanding, and so by him saying that. He's, he's acknowledging uh, some sort of prescription of the law of identity and things like that and saying it it does not apply. That's what it seems do you like. Have he's pro- do, you have a, do you have a problem with that, John? Do you have a problem with that? Um, <laughs> no, I actually don't have a problem with that. Um, like you were I think that so it's not what? biblical. Wait a minute. <laughs> he, the, the same numerically and not identical is not biblical is what he was saying? No, I thought that's what you were saying. Um, I, do, I wouldn't necessarily say it's not biblical. I'd have to look into it. But, I mean, just at first glance, I would not necessarily say it's unbiblical. So, so what was the objection it, you were just saying? And it would just, be, it would just be based upon some sort of understanding of identity, and if identity is relational to the Paschal laws of identity, well then... Yeah. Uh, let's, then let me ask it this way, John. Do you think it's possibly true that relative identity Trinitarianism in the first manner that you were expressing it is true? Do you think it's possible? Yeah, I, think, I definitely think it's possible. Okay. So you don't hold to classical identity necessarily um i think i think in the natural order of things i do hold to classical identity i think i think uh when we look at god he's not limited to uh the natural laws that are um okay. he's not subject to so them now anymore. now you're basically going like in the direction of what darth was saying in the clip you don't think that god is as you you were basically saying constrained by the laws of logic is that correct yeah i believe i heard you call that like volunteerism or something like that yeah volunteerism um i don't really know what that term entails but um basically they're created by god's will uh, they're not necessary what do you what do you mean you don't know what it's into it entails that God's not constrained by the laws of logic. Do you agree, yes or no? Well, I mean, clearly, yeah. like when when um, when he multiplies the the loaves and the fishes, then then oh, you know. God. See, John, listen. Mm-hmm. Literally, I spent how long on on Facebook when I was chatting with you and James Gibson and Matt Adams? I spent a really really long time trying to explain to you guys what a contradiction is. And it was so frustrating because you guys keep bringing up this example. You don't understand the relevant difference between the two. So it seems like you still don't understand what an actual contradiction is. Well, I I remembered a lot of those times when uh, we were having those discussions. It was just like, okay, these this there's this option there's this choice there's that choice and i do remember for a time i was like yeah you know what yeah like i would even say it explicitly yeah god violates the classical laws of identity or something yeah and you're basically saying that now john you're basically saying it like if that's your view fine just own up to it and that's your view deal with the consequences or entailment for the view 
but you were, I mean, you remember that was like how I viewed it. And, uh, yeah, but I dude, I, you're, I, I you've been talking about your model and you're walking through and I'm explaining the problems with it. And then you're like sliding over here and sliding over there. I just want to know where you're going to come down. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But that, although that was my position, it was provisional. And, and I still kind of oh. lean toward that. Oh. Right, but but I've also heard some arguments that there is no violation. It's just a just what, are the, what are those arguments? Violation. I'm just saying that I've heard some arguments. That's all. I'm not. I didn't say. Wait that a minute. I he still. He still uh, you still haven't answered the question, right? This is going to be the third or fourth time it's been asked. It's really simple. It's one of those questions you have to answer in order to understand your position, so that we can move forward in the dialectic, right? Question was, do you believe that God is constrained by the laws of logic? Uh, no. So, John, you believe that God could create a square circle, for example, or a married bachelor? Um, no, not in a natural sense. So we're talking about God's Holy being, shit. not why not? Why not? What? Why not? What's the relevant difference? I think because God creates. Like when he created the universe, there are certain laws uh, that that govern um, the universe, such as the law of thermodynamics, uh, such but as aren't the those laws of logic, John? Things like that. Aren't those conditions? They're, they're contin yeah. yeah, contingent upon God. Yes. God, yeah. So uh, why couldn't he them. couldn't he have created it differently that we we saw like square circles floating around? Um. Yeah. I mean, I I don't. Uh, first and foremost, they're they're contradictory in a definition. First and foremost, term, right? And so, even even from that point of view, they're contradictory. Even even though even though that the whole that point is that, that God, they are contradictory, dude. So yeah, they could, are. Yeah. Yeah. So g could God have actualized that state of affairs and created? A square circle. Is there a possible world in which God creates a square circle? Or marry bachelor? Yeah, I mean, my, my first sense would be no. Okay, if your answer is no, then you're saying in terms of him actually willing something, he is constrained by the laws of logic, correct? Uh, for the creator order of things, yes. Oh my God! My okay, God. so he is, but then, but then for God Himself, there's like another higher order sense where everything else holds and almost universally, but then God is outside of that, and he, he's above. He he's above it. He's above it. Yeah, so he can contradict the laws of logic in his own being, but he can't create something contradictory. Um. Basically, some something similar to that. Yeah, that's how I view that. Okay, so then the law, the law of non-contradiction, is not true because it doesn't hold universally. No, it's true. Correct? It's true in the natural universe. But it's not true universally, correct? Uh, not universally, no. Right. And the stipulation. It's kind of. It's kind of. It's kind of like. It's kind of like uh, the law. Hold on, John. Okay. Hold on. Part of part of part of the definition is that it is universal. So you're saying that it doesn't hold universally. Therefore, you're rejecting. Yeah, it. So it's kind of like the laws of thermodynamics. They hold true in a closed uh, system, for example, not universally. Kind of in like an isolated that. system, wow. actually. But what do you, what do you think about that, yeah. Jake? Well, he's just rejecting the law of non-contradiction. And, and, and the law of comparing yeah. physical laws to laws of logic. Just... Yeah, he j it's just a he doesn't understand. I mean, I, I've explained to these guys many times the difference of, of a, what's deemed to be a necessary law of logic and a con uh, contingent natural law. But anyway, John, uh, I just think he's neglecting that. But the, the point, John, is that you're just saying it doesn't hold universally. I mean, so, I mean it, seems like, it seems like uh, when I was talking to Abdul Rahman about this, I talked about the laws of nature, how God instantiates this, how God instantiates the, the laws of logic as well. 
he almost took the laws of logic to be a separate concept than the laws of nature. And, they are. And, they are separate. What do you mean? They're not the same thing. Yeah, he almost thought that as far as the laws of logic, uh, they are true in a universal sense. Uh, Correct. Sans creation, uh, things That's like right. that. That's right. Where, where, yes. whereas, whereas, whereas I would uh, understand it uh, as some sort of like the laws of nature, where they are exactly. true within this natural universe. Exactly. And so they're, was, only I, con they're only And that's how I understand the laws of uh, logic as well within this natural yeah. universe. So, John, they're only contingently true. They're not necessarily true. Um, if you, I guess if you want to use that language, I would probably say, yeah, that's how I do that. Yeah, they're con they're, they're they're laws that are that are contingent. They're not necessary truths. Okay, and I guess you're going so to give no me the details of that. What's that? I guess you're prepared to give me the the logical entailments of that and the problems with that. Well, you're uh, well, John. The problem is just obvious. You're just denying the classical laws of logic. What the hell are you talking about? As the universal, that's John correct. John being so meek with Jake when he's like so uppity with us. I don't get it. Deference, submission. John, what, what, John, are you, you understand what you're actually saying? I think I do. Okay, so you're uh, saying. I'm basically saying God is not subject to the laws of logic. Oh, okay, right, which means they don't hold universally. And he's above them in some sense, whatever that means. In which case, you're denying law of identity, law of non-contradiction, and law of excluded middle. You're denying all three of them. And you're saying uh, none in of the them hold universe, universally. No, but not no, but in the for God, universe. for God, none of them hold universally, correct? In the sense that they don't apply to him. Right. I think, I think that uh, it's not like he's subject to them, in other words. He's sovereign over okay. them. Okay, so you... John, what you have done, this, let me just make this final statement. Tom. So, John, what you have done, you've solved the logical problem of the Trinity by abandoning logic. <laughs> well, I think if you're going to attempt to use logic to understand uh, the Trinity, I think it's going to be a fail to begin with. In a sense, he that from my thing, understanding, the, of evil, the knowledge, what, the mysteries of the Trinity, the knowledge of the Trinity is Here divinely... Here comes the mystery talk. No, I'm just yeah. saying, it is, is given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I mean, what, like, even in the, what, the Catechism 278, it'll say stuff like that? And yeah, so and it, that's garbage, because I already told you how the word mystery is used in the Bible. Can you show me an instance of the Bible and where it uses the word mystery in the way that you are? Well, I understand mystery yeah. as as something that is revealed in a sense of made known. Yeah. So if it's, real, I, it's revealed and made known, then you would know what it is. Correct? Yeah. And, and it's not that's something what, that you that's don't what know what the catechism what it is. says, though, is that the Bible uh, does say that. I mean, I mean, the catechism does say how. It has been made known to believers, so I'm paraphrasing, of course, but and it's not comprehensible to someone who does not have that faith. John, can you know what a contradiction is? What? Meaning, can you grasp that? Yeah, A and not A. Yeah, but you can affirm it. So you have no problem with that. You have no problem saying God is contradictory. Um... No, I mean, I wouldn't be able to affirm that. No. Why not? I think I think that God can be viewed as contradictory uh, by using natural processes to uh, analyze God. I would say it that oh, way. God, we're not using natural processes. Well, we're if, using the laws of logic. Yeah, and and I consider that natural. Okay. Yeah, you consider them natural and created by God, correct? Uh, well, emanating from God, maybe from the mind of Are God. They, that kind of... Yeah. Are they eternally yeah. emanating or, or is it just like happen in time? How does that work? No, it's kind of like creation. Is creation uh, eternally emanating? No, it, it, it is. It is oh, okay. God... So it's, so it's, so it's created. So that means sans creation, as you like to use, apart from creation or without creation, 
that means the laws of logic don't apply to God, correct? Uh, yeah, I would I would actually say that. Yeah, well, so you're well, just well, rejecting wait, wait, wait. the laws of logic, dude. In a in a universal wait, sense, so yes. If the laws of logic if the laws of logic were created before any creation, was God God? Well, even the consideration of that concept would require language that incorporates the laws of logic. So you're trying you're John, trying to... was God identical to himself prior to creation? Well, I mean, if you're going to look at it from the lens of logic and, and you're viewing like the, the, the answer to something like that is it's not possible. Well, it's not possible to know wow. the reality of. It would have to be speculation. It's not. You have to. Nah, no, it's not it's speculation, not speculation because there are no laws of logic. Per, I didn't what say you just there's said. no laws of logic. Yes, you did. You you, you said, said there. You said that they created. don't exist until prior they to their creation. No, no, they didn't no. exist. I said they don't exist in the universal sense. Is what I said. Yeah, but if creation doesn't exist and they're the only thing that they apply to, then they don't exist prior to God creating them and creation existing. Um, I think I think they could still exist within the mind of God in a sense. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Some of these natural. Oh my ones. God, dude! If they exist in the Ad mind of God, gibberish. they exist in the mind of God and, eternally. And so what, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is this, okay? These considerations. Are tempted in the here and now in the natural universe by so finite what? creatures such as ourselves, implementing oh. certain God given laws to do what? Examine God and consider God? This is what yes. you're attempting to do. This, there is a circularity yeah. uh, somewhere in there. Yeah, we're, we're trying to find out if God is contradictory or not. That's correct. Yeah. But you're just biting the bullet and saying, oh, I don't care. He may be. Who cares? And if you contradict yourself when you try to explain it. Yeah, John, I, going back to the it's point. Unbelievable. God prior to creation, is he identical to himself? Yeah, but that, that kind of th that consideration requires implementing the laws of logic, of which... Exactly. Like, it's kind of like... You just throw his hands up. What's the fucking like, answer, it's stupid? It's kind of, it's kind of like asking... Uh, are the thermal, laws of thermodynamics true? Sans creation, it, it's, it's kind of hard to answer. It's very that simple to answer to that and say no, because creation doesn't exist. That's very simple to answer. Well, that doesn't that doesn't imply that the laws necessarily don't have to exist. How how are they true if they don't they exist? They just can't be demonstrated. They just they can't exist? be demonstrated to be true. Uh, without without the natural existence, but doesn't mean the that they didn't exist. What, what is even the proposition, John? Like they don't exist. The law can't do Let's anything. I mean, depending on exist. how you understand existence, I would think that they existed in the mind you're, of God. You're conceiving of it in the mind of God, correct? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, so was the law of identity? Hold on, John. Was the law of identity? Did it eternally exist in the mind of God? Um. Yeah, I would think that it comes from the nature oh of God, God, the mind of God. So no, forth. you said it but comes that, from, but, but, but before you said it was right. created. So now when you said, oh, it exists, but it, it was created, now you're equivocating because now you're saying that, oh, but what I mean by exists is in the mind of God and eternally. So how is it created if it exists eternally in God's oh, mind? the same thing with the laws of nature, right? They existed in the mind of God, but there they were the, when the natural universe was created, these laws uh, are, are somehow unified in the sense of uh, being established. So these laws are established not prior okay, to the So John, the you believe in things you believe in things that are contingent and eternal and created. Uh, the law of logic to you is something that is created, it is contingent, and it is eternal. Um, I would, I Correct? wouldn't necessarily know it. I wouldn't necessarily claim that these laws are eternal, only in the sense that they are uh, non-creations 
but yet they are in the mind of God. Dude, you and literally so said when before they were, when, created. When, when, when creation began, yeah, created created. when creation began, uh, yes, these things were created in a sense of establishment. They're created. Uh, they were. They were. They were made. They were appointed. If you wanted to use the technical term, uh, the word would be a saw in the biblical Hebrew. Okay, that was just nonsense. which is which is which John. is not synonymous with the sort of the next the helo creation. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. So you just mean that they're eternally dependent on God and God's mind, correct? Um. Yeah, they're they're contingent. I, I I'm not saying they're not contingent. You know what's crazy? Yeah. It's crazy that John's actually right about the that that uh a saw thing. That's I'm surprised you know that, John. Well, I'm I'm okay. glad, yeah, I'm glad right. someone understood. No. Any anyway, go ahead with the. Yeah, who cares about that? Yeah, he's right once in a while. I'll give him that. Anyway, John, uh, back to the question. When we were asking if God is identical to himself prior to creation, are you going to give a clear answer to that? Or are you just going to keep saying, well, they they don't apply? But you're saying they're eternal in God's mind. So they would exist in order for them to be able to apply in that case. Why couldn't they be applied? Yeah, I, I would say that, like, it's kind of like asking, like, what time was it before the universe was created? Did it, we understand that's what you just time. said. No, it's not, dude. It's a little bit no, like that not. because of what you're asking to consider is a logical consideration. You just said logic existed and before it was yeah, created. Because normally, because normally the laws of logic are not subject dependent. I mean, they don't depend on whether or not we're asking about Tom Rabbit or John Lee or a stop sign or God. They're not typically understood to be subject or context dependent. They're universal in that way. So it has nothing to do with creation or not creation. However, yeah, but I don't, natural I don't laws, hold on, universal. hold on, hold on. But the natural laws, like the laws of thermodynamics, typically they're understood to, at least from a theist perspective, to be applicable to creation. You don't ask about the law of thermodynamics with respect to God and things of that nature. However, you would when it comes to the laws of logic, if you thought that they were eternal and actually universal and that they apply to God. But you don't think that. You think that they're subject dependent. They apply to everything else except for God. Correct? Yeah, in a sense that, uh, well, I'm just saying this. They do, they can and do apply to God, but only in the sense that the creatures who are finite, who have uh, limited minds, are implementing the, the, the things that God has given us uh, to consider god that just means they don't they don't apply necessarily uh, and that's not even what you're copying to and so what i what i'm saying is that when, when you think of a world that has not been created right there is no laws of thermodynamics and i would even contend there is no logic whoa now you're saying there is no logic not not as something established for the natural order of things Wait, wait, wait. Before, I thought it was established for the natural order, but not for God. Now you're saying it's not established whatsoever? No, 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 no. no. I didn't say not for God. In other words, we can use the laws of logic in order to make considerations for a God that we are limited in understanding. Uh, we're talking about application to God, right? Subject to God. Uh, those uh, are God being subject to them in a universal sense. This is this is how can you do that? With. How can you use logic to describe God when logic doesn't apply to God? How can you do that? I, I, I didn't say it couldn't be applied to God. I'm saying that in John, is it possible that sans creation God was not identical to himself? Is that possible? I would say that sans creation there were no laws of identity to even contemplate. Would so okay, so that would be possible. The question. Look at that fucking dodge. Because your question assumes a I'm universal no understanding logic. of the laws of logic, and therefore, being that the that that uh, the laws of logic existed in perpetuity, uh, that consideration can be made. I don't make that assumption. 
Okay, so you just reject classical logic because you don't believe any of the three laws are universal, correct? In a universal sense, I don't. Okay, so... But that doesn't mean I reject I the classical laws of logic, though. Uh, it does, because the, the idea is that they are universal. That's the understanding. They're okay. not meant to be understood so, as subject dependent. Classically okay. So the, so the, the you more, have to adopt a sub classical yeah. understanding. But, okay, but the more accurate statement would be: I reject the classical laws of logic being universal, but in the world that we live in, the natural order thing. Dude, that's just saying that the same applicable. thing. If if definitionally, the the classical laws of logic are understood to hold universally then there's no point in saying i just don't believe that they're universal you just don't believe in them because that's definitionally true that they're meant to be understood as universal so if if the definition of classical laws of logic imply necessarily universality then i have no problem if that is the case which i'm not convinced of but if that's the case i have no problem rejecting it you're not convinced of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, not convinced, of it. I'm not convinced that there's a, some, some sort of a, 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 require, like a, classic, a, require, like a prerequisite that atheist. they I'm need just, to I'm be universal. Dude, that's how they're understood classically, John. That's the whole point. The subclassical logics, even them, they don't say, they don't, and this is what they argue, people like Grand Priest, which, which Matt likes to bring up. They think that they can avoid you know, the principle of explosion where you just get anything being contradictory, basically. So they don't think that it, it doesn't apply in any instance. They're just saying it's not universal. You understand that? Yeah, I just, uh, that, would, that would be my position and it's subject to change, <laughs> but that would be my position that although okay, I agree John. with the, the laws of logic, and I, just as I agree with the laws of thermodynamics, I do. Yeah. I don't think either are universal. Okay, John so that the was your, atheist. Exactly. So, John, um, you said that's your position, and it's subject to change. I can appreciate that. I hope it. I hope it will change on some point. Um, but was that your position going into this conversation? Yeah, more or less. You've heard me on. on so why didn't about you it. explain it this way from the beginning instead of wasting our time talking about a guy with two papers and whatever else you were going on about? Because it wasn't his position. Well, I didn't know what. I yeah, didn't, I don't think. I didn't was. know what direction you wanted to take it, but this particular position, Jake, I, I'm pretty sure you kind of knew about already. Yeah, but bro, you could just simply have stated this from the beginning, and we could say, well, okay. End of story. We would have like, well, you know, poked fun at it for the past fifteen minutes, like we did, and then well, that would have been the end. We you, I want to let me let me just, let me just say answered, one thing because I'm simply an, answered you. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's what it would have happened. So, John, your analogies I don't think were accurate. So, um, do you think? Um, let me ask you these questions. Um, in a, in a situation where there is no time, is it possible for it to be three o'clock? I think I think the question would just come up E, right? Like an error. Oh my God, John! It can't be three o'clock if there's no time. Yeah, if there's no once <laughs> once again, I, I that particular question about if there were no time, I I don't agree that that we can consider uh, uh, um, an existence without time in a sense of uh using implementing uh the laws of logic and reason how do you consider things anything that, then? things in the natural talking about well, time we can, bro. we can consider things in the natural universe uh is what i'm trying to say he, he's he's trying to insert a hypothetical of implementing the laws of logic to a situation where i'm claiming that it's not universally uh existent for example and then, and then, and I don't know what that, this has to do. It's a really simple question, John. If it is the case that there's no time, is it possible that it is three o'clock? Yeah, and I would say that the question is unanswerable. 
it's unanswerable, what prevents you from answering it? Because it, it, because it, because it assumes some sort of universality of uh, the laws of logic. Uh, we're talking it's about unanswerable time. because he denies the laws of logic. Uh, universally. So, so are you saying it's possible for it to be three o'clock with no time? Again, if you're going to consider the logical possibility of, you still have to use the laws of logic, sir. Didn't ask you that. He just asked Talk if it's possible. Yeah, so John, can you even make any true statements about God sans creation? Um, other than what is revealed to us, it would be speculation. So John, how would you refute... How do you know what's revealed to you? How would you refute the idea if I said that my God is a square circle? I'd say cool story, bro. So you wouldn't be able to refute that, <laughs> just to be clear. No, it was just like, uh, you know, like my God exists in a brain in a vat. Like, I'm not interested in refuting that either. Well, is it, no, you're not. It's not well, that you're not John, interested. You've... It's that you, given your position, you can't, right? Well, I don't know. Well, I'll say this way. I don't know about can't, but I certainly am not willing to. Okay. Sounds like you're tapped out. Dude. We think John, we're, we're um, that you've, you said that atheism is irrational. Do by that do you mean that there's contradictions in atheism? I think that uh, a great number of views have been uh, demonstrated to be incoherent and irrational. Atheism is not incoherent, a monolithic. Incoherent view, meaning... Right? In, right, so of those of, of that set of views un, under the set of atheism, which are incoherent, by incoherent, do you mean that it is containing some kind of contradiction? Yeah, I think there are clear contradictions in people who claim to believe, a lack of belief in God, and when they express no, we're their talking about view, I'm, not, I'm right? talking about the, belief, the, the worldview of atheism. Do you think there's contradictions in it? Yeah, with respect to like atheism in and of okay, itself, okay. the answer would be no. There are no contradictions in and of itself. It's just a, it's oh, just a proposition really? that there's God. no God. This is right? great. Are you kidding me? This is great. Right. So that's not what I'm talking about. But people's views. How would you know? How would you know if somebody wait, can wait. be incoherent? How? How would you know if somebody contradicts themselves, John? They're inconsistent. <laughs> They're incoherent. But the laws of logic are they not, violate, not yeah, that, They violate the laws of logic, for example. Why are they not allowed yeah, so, to, John? What was the if question? It's not univer if it's not universal, why can't Tom just say that the law doesn't apply in this case? Because it's not universal. Well, the law, the law, you can just say, well, like I said, the laws do apply necessarily within this natural universe That's yeah but why doesn't why does an atheist have to affirm that why can't they just take your view and instead of applying it to god apply it to what you consider to be the natural realm i don't quite understand that question you say that mm -hmm. the laws of logic don't hold universally and god is exempt why can't an atheist say that about the natural world? That the natural world is exempt from the laws of logic? Correct. That it doesn't hold, like it doesn't hold universally. It might hold in some instances, but not all. Mm -hmm. Including Tom's own beliefs, it doesn't hold in that case. He's allowed okay. to contradict himself. Okay, and so an atheist certainly could try to make that attempt to say that they don't hold in the natural world, but that, that that position has a lot of entailments to it. No, that, 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 you're already that, wrong. You're already wrong. You're already wrong. Just listen, Mister Mister Nuance. Right? Listen. No one said that they don't hold period in the natural world. It was said they don't hold always. Universally. That's why you have dialetheism. That's right. So what's wrong with dialetheism? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. So what are you talking yeah, about when you say that, that an atheist contradicts themselves? Yeah, I think I think uh, uh, implementing the laws of logic that are temporal 
and contingent upon God that we can uh, use those laws to demonstrate that a particular atheist holds views that are inconsistent with another with with another belief within his uh, within his mind. There's no or, problem. Or, or, there's no problem with dialetheism, so the law of non-contradiction doesn't hold. So anyone can contradict themselves at any time. And so, if that's the view that you hold, no, that's that, your view. That particular. That's no. what you just said. You just said there's no problem We're not with talking, no. But, but, but John, you're not able to view. argue. You're not able to argue against that view, are you? The only way, the only way that, as far as argument goes, it would we would have to have a basis of mutual agreement, right? And if we, if if it is a case that they don't even agree upon the laws of logic, for example, I then, like you. then there's no pur there's no purpose in, it, in even making the attempt. To have a conversation, right. we don't so have. So, like basic how agreement. you don't believe that the laws of logic apply to God, it would kind of be useful, useless to speak about God in a logical way and use logical arguments, right? Because you don't believe they apply to God, so there would be no point in talking with you about God, right? No, because because you and I do agree on the laws of logic, <laughs> but. No, no so, we so, don't. So, no, I don't no, think you do. Don't. They're, they're, so, so, so in other words, no, no. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, at least if you view it universally, and I view it in a sort of temporal sense, right? No, um, you think that they came after God, right? Yes. Right. John, you don't, that's not an agreement. Don't have the oh same God. view, dude. Like the fact that you think after all this time that we're actually agreeing. It's just astonishing. No, no, no. Well, I, don't know how you I think you guys are misunderstanding, you. okay, what I'm saying. For example, I believe oh, that this God. apple how exists. How would we know? You, hang on, sir. You believe that this apple exists. Now, I may believe this apple is caused by God. You may believe it's, it's, it's by natural selection or something, right? It's not, it doesn't really matter if you believe that the, the, that, uh, the natural selection, I believe in God, the point is that if we both agree that this apple exists, we could talk about this apple. Yeah, but when presented with logical problems, you'll just say, well, that doesn't apply to God. That's dumb. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Do you think logical problems apply to God? I think that we uh, that God is above logic. Just start with logic. a yes or no and then, then explain. What I'm saying is God is not subject to logic so that so that when our considerations of trying to uh, uh, analyze God in an exhaustive manner is so you got to run all your endeavor. gibberish through the fucking translation so I'm not, I'm not, machine to get yeah, a Yeah, so I wouldn't even attempt it. So I wouldn't attempt it. I think, I think, I think there are ways to view... Uh, so the answer to, is no. So uh, my, consider God, my criticism goes I think through. There are many, I think there are many analogical uh, methods by which to consider God. And, and those are the you know. methods that I... John, how would you, you rate your defense of your position on the Trinity? Like, well, I, you I, mentioned I don't necessarily... Like, how, how would you rate I don't necessarily defense? think we talked that much about the Trinity in the last hour or so. Seems like we talked oh. a lot about the laws of logic. Why, would that, why like is that, that relevant to the question? With regards to the section of the conversation where you defended the Trinity, how do you... Well, I mean, so? what, what attack was made? What? What was your question? Well, I mean, the question of rating my defense of the Trinity, I would almost, by that yeah. kind of question, I would, I would kind of think, like, uh, what attack was made, other than certain claims about the, <laughs> the universality of the, log, the laws of logic and, mm -hmm. and Leibniz's law of, and uh, the law of identity and, and, yeah. and, and so forth. Right, like the attack that was made is you said that you could defend it and you started off by using analogies and talking a lot. And then what wound up happening was you basically threw the laws of logic out the window by saying that they don't apply universally yeah. and they don't apply to God. The claim that I could so defend how it you, was not actually made though, Jake. It was, there was... Yeah, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. to you, like what kind of a... Like, this isn't a hard position to come up with, right? 
something very easy. And that's why I said you could have just stated it at the beginning and there wouldn't be much to really talk about with respect to the Trinity. And then we would just be having this other conversation. Right? What Muslim, I have a question. Can I can I attempt to uh, defend my own model of the Trinity? Uh, because I do have a further spin from the material constitutional model. Um, and, um, I mean, I just spoke to you yesterday, so. But if I can run, if I can run, run it to you again, or I'm not really that interested. Yeah, John, all you, you, this was one of the worst defenses of the Trinity I've ever heard. You gave up, you gave up the ghost (laughs) on the laws of logic. You gave up your criticism of atheists, right? Um, you you gave up that God was identical to himself prior to creation. I didn't say that, sir. Um, I didn't give up. I didn't, didn't affirm it. Well, you didn't, you weren't yeah, willing I, didn't, I also didn't give yeah. up any criticisms of, of atheist worldview, sir. I think they're all. Yeah, it's just an entailment. It's just an entailment. What you've what you said. We know you didn't say it, but that doesn't mean that you. Yeah. So go ahead and make like, up whatever you want about positions. I don't. No, know. I'm not making. No, no, Jake. Jake, don't. Do you not think that that's an entailment of what he said? That God prior to creation, yeah, logically prior is not no, no. identical to himself. Wait a minute. You, is that you're, not the entailment? Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Very least he was agnostic on, on it. He's you agnostic made you on. you made two claims of which what you're mentioning right now was not one of the two, sir. He just repeated He's that. That, he, that was one of the claims he just made. No, actually, it wasn't, Jake. He mentioned two specific claims, and right now he says uh, the, uh, he's talking about uh, uh, you know prior to creation or something like that. That was not John, mentioned. You just mean that, that it wasn't like the same exact words verbatim? Is that what you mean? No, they were com- they were completely different claims. Okay, well, I didn't catch that. I didn't see them that way. And and when he started off uh, with regard to, like, giving up on atheism, which has nothing to do, Jake, with what he just said. Do you agree? That's what I was objecting to. That was one of the two. No, well, we were trying to ask you about how you would attack an atheist who held to that position, and you, you didn't give any answer. I mean. Well, first and foremost, he said that I gave up on my attacks against atheism, which is absolutely false. And then he says, didn't, didn't John, and then he brings in God, sans creation, all of that. That's not what I said that he's straw manning me with. That's what I'm no, trying to point out. No, the entailment of the things that you... I'll the entailment of that again, John. has nothing I'll just to make do with it really, your false claims. I'll just make it really clear again, John, right? The entailment of the things that you did say is that before creation, God was not identical to himself. That's the entailment. I didn't say that, sir. That's Mr. representation. Yeah. yeah, I know you didn't say it, right, because you don't want to say it. But it's it was said it was, as far as an entailment, right? The things that you did say entails that. Jake, do you disagree, Jake? Uh, no, I don't disagree, but I think just John's just kind of waffling at this point. There you go, John. So. Jake does not disagree with me. Do you think Jake is straw manning you, John? Well, of course he thinks that. I mean, what else is he going to think? No, he doesn't want to say that, though, because he defers to you. He don't like me, though. So, I, see, I, he wanted to direct all the... I mean, you as much said so, like many times that that's basically the entailment of the things he's saying he doesn't want to come at you though because um he defers to you he's meek towards you but he doesn't like me so he wants to claim that i'm straw manning him when it's pointed out that you affirm the thing that i said he won't affirm that you're straw manning him yeah i mean john is definitely not given any principle way of distinguishing so I don't know. Maybe he'll come up with something later on, but I don't see it here. Yeah, he sounds uh, inconsistent, and you seem to say that he's uh, done pretty poorly 
and you've been talking to him on Facebook for quite a while.